Hi everyone, this is Andrew Prima, Ukraine-American, living and reporting from Ukraine. I'm a founder of Ukraine Business News, UBN.News, report, reporting from the front lines of the Ukrainian war with Russia. In, today, in today's podcast, 10th week of war in Ukraine. So we will cover the following. The fight for Mariupol Azov plant and evacuation of civilians. Russians stealing grain and farm equipment from Ukraine and moving to Russia. Moldova conflict is getting hot. And Russia realizes there will be no victory. Mariupol situation has been very critical this week. Ukraine has been negotiating with Russia about evacuating 1,000 civilians hiding at the Mariupol Azov plant. As you might know, Russian forces have surrounded the Mariupol and Mariupol Azov plant where Ukraine army forces kept defending themselves and thousands of civilians for over six weeks. In the first two days of May, the authorities evacuated more than 100 women, children and the elderly from the Azov Stal plant. However, according to government officials, Despite the Mariupol's humanitarian operation, hundreds of civilians are blocked in Azovstal together with defenders of Mariupol. The current situation has become a sign of a real humanitarian catastrophe because people are running out of water, food, and medicine. A couple of days later, on May 6th, 50 children, women, and elderly were evacuated from Azovstal plant in Mariupol. On the day back, the humanitarian convoy was supposed to take people to Port City, but couldn't do that because it was forced to stand all day near the plant due Russian shelling and other provocations. During the evacuation, three Ukrainian servicemen were killed and six others were injured in the evacuation of civilians from Azovstal in Mariupol on Friday, May 6. Deputy commander of Azov uh, unit stated that one of the fighters died due to anti-tank missile hitting an evacuation vehicle. Two were killed by UAV drones. According to, as of today, according to President Zelensky, as of May, on, as of May 9th, all civilians were evacuated from Azovstal. However, hundreds of wounded Ukrainian soldiers are still there and about 1,500 active troops are still defending the Azovstal plant. In the meantime, the Russian occupiers trying to storm the Azovstal, where Ukrainian soldiers currently defended the territory for more than six weeks. According to one of the defenders of Azovstal, now the occupiers are trying to break into the plant. Before the assault, Russian aircraft bombed the plant and now Azovstal is being stormed. Later, later this week, Mariupol Mayor Vadim Boychenko said that enemy was shelling Azovstal with heavy artillery and tanks, aircraft and ships. Hundreds of civilians have fleeing the shelter of the plant from Russian shelling. More than 100,000 people remain in the city who are also waiting to be evacuated. On the third day of the assault, fighting on the territory of the hostile plant has been going on for three days. Orcs have broken into the plant and fighting is underway. There is no regime of silence. In the block in the blocked Mariupol, Russian forces captured Ukrainian civilians to work on dismantling the ruins of houses and high-rise buildings. As you know, as of today, 90% of residential buildings in Mariupol city have been completely destroyed. A large number of human bodies and their fragments are found under the rubble of buildings. People who are forced to rake up con 
constipation often have nervous breakdowns, said one of the force, forced workers of Mariupol. The man lasted only a few days. He says that people who worked both who worked both vomited and fell into silent stupor. There were regular tantrums. The number of human bodies and their fragments under the rubble is insane. There were about 80 to 100 dead bodies under each house they raked up, the witnesses confirmed. According to him, there are well-founded suspicions that the official figures for human losses in Mariupol may not match the real ones. Currently, in the occupied territories, the Russian occupiers stealing and moving the grain from the territories of Ukraine back to Russia. Almost 4.5 million tons of grain were blocked in Ukrainian ports. Products cannot be exported through closed sea roads routes due to the Russian invasion. The Russians are still in Ukrainian grey worth of hundreds of millions of dollars. The Russian invaders have already exported several hundred thousand tons of grain from the temporarily occupied territories in the Luhansk, Donetsk, Kherson and Zaporizhia regions. The losses of Ukrainian farmers may total hundreds of millions of dollars, confirmed the first deputy minister of agrarian policy. According to him, the farm stocks in this area, which were formed for sowing and processing, meaning for making flour, flour and baking bread, contain about 1.5 million tons of grain. At international prices, it's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And there is a significant risk that it will simply be stolen from Ukraine by the Russian occupiers. Besides that, the Russians stole five million dollars worth of farm vehicles from Ukraine. Over the past few weeks, there has been a growing number of reports of Russian troops stealing farm equipment, grain, and even building materials beyond widespread looting of residences. But the removal of valuable agriculture equipment from from a John Deere dealership in Mariupol speaks to increasingly organized operation, one that even uses Russian military transport as part of the heist. Altogether, it's valued at nearly $5 million. The combined harvesters alone are worth $300,000 each. Over the next few weeks, 27 pieces of farm machinery was taken away. One of the flatbed trucks used and caught on camera had a white Z sign painted on it and appeared to be a military truck. Some of the machinery was taken to a nearby village, but some of it embarked on a long overland journey to Chechnya, the Russian, uh, the Russian region, the, the region of Russian Federation, which is more than 700 miles away. The sophistication of the machinery, which are equipped with GPS, meant that it travel could be tracked. It was last tracked to, at one of the villages in Chechnya. The equipment ferried to Chechnya, which included combined harvesters, can also be controlled remotely. When the invaders drove the stolen harvesters to Chechnya, they realized they could not even turn them on because the harvesters were locked remotely by the Ukrainian owners. Moreover, Russia continued to block millions of tons of Ukrainian grain bound for export. Russia has blocked all seaports and trade routes through which Ukrainian grain was exported worldwide. As a result, millions of tons of grain remained strained in Ukrainian ports. Russia's actions inevitably lead to a food crisis globally, said President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky. You have to understand that Russian ships have blocked all the trade routes. Everyone sees it. There are data from space intelligence 
intelligence that cannot be refuted. Today, there are no warships in the Black Sea except for the Russian ones, Zelensky confirmed. According to the UN World Food Program, almost 4.5 tons of grain, millions, 4.5 million tons of grain are blocked in Ukrainian ports, and the grain cannot be exported through closed sea routes in Russia's military invasion. As a result of the Russian aggression and blockage of the grain export, about 1.7 billion people worldwide will starve this year. Currently, Russia escalated conflict in Moldova region, which is the region on the western part of Ukraine. The Kremlin wants to attack Moldova and will try to open a new front against Ukraine. This will, this will allow Russian troops to enter the Black Sea port of Odessa from the west. The fate of Moldova is very decisive. If the, Russian, if the Russians manage to take control, we will become an easier target militarily and the threat to Ukraine will be existential. According to one of the, uh, according to some of the sources, Russia can launch a Donbas scenario in Moldova and recognize it as a part of Russia. You remember the way they did in Donbas, so the separatist groups started riots and took over the region. This is the same strategy can be applied in Moldova region. And Moldova is of today as a small country and most likely can be taken over within a couple of days. According to Ukrainian intelligence, there is activity at the main airport in Tiraspol, Moldova, the capital, the capital of unrecognized Transnistria. According to some official, the government official, officials, it indicates that Russia is preparing for airborne operation involving helicopters and aircrafts. In their report, military analysis anal analyst Jake Walton and Nick Reynolds of the Royal John Institute for Defense Studies suggested that such an operation by the Russians could have the following goals. First, withdraw Ukrainian troops to the southwestern front, stopping the pro-European course of the current government of Moldova, and this will demonstrate to the West that supporting Ukraine with arms and finances could lead to further destabilization in the region, including in the Balkans. At the same time, Western officials said that the Russians didn't have enough firepower to break through the land corridor to Transistria, and that Ukraine's air defense were capable of shooting down, shooting down low-speed transport planes with paratroopers. Earlier in Transistria, there were several provocations with explosions, which were organized by Russian special services, and the local administration controlled by the Kremlin regime began, uh, began to convene people for a military meeting. For its part, Ukraine has strengthened the protection of the state border with the region and the defense forces have taken appropriate positions. On April 22nd, the deputy commander of the Central Military District of Russia stated that the occupation of southern, southern Ukraine would allow Russian troops to make another exit to Transistria. According to him, they notice the facts of the so-called oppression of the Russian-speaking population. Chisinau rejected the accusations, stressed, stressed its neutrality in the war with Ukraine, and called on Moscow to respect it. The General Intelligence Directorate of the Ministry of Defense said that Russia was repairing, preparing a missile strike on unrecognized Transistria with civilian casualties. President Volodymyr Zelensky stated 
the, that Ukraine is ready for escalation on the part of Russia and it's not afraid of its troops. There are a few updates of Ukrainian army forces. The commander of chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Zaluzhny, announced plans for the Ukrainian army to abandon Soviet weapon and switch to NATO models. As you know, Western allies have been supplying heavy, heavy weapons to Ukraine and Ukrainian soldiers started learning how to use the new weaponry. Zaluzhny stressed that the Russians had again begun to strike with cruise missiles, so the enemy is trying to destroy the logistics of military technical assistance to Ukraine. Missiles are not an obstacle. Russia's massive missile strike on Ukraine didn't interfere with the supply of Western weapons to the Ukrainian army, said the Pentagon spokesman John Kirby. We know that we know that materials, weapons, and ammunition fall into the hands of Ukrainians, he added. Enemy troops have reached a deal and the aggressor's, troop, the aggressor's troops didn't make the desired progress in the, in the Donbass and the south uh, regions, said Pentagon spokesman John Corby. What we are focusing on is keeping this resistance as taut as possible, he added. According to Kirby, there are several reasons for the failure of the Russians. Firstly, the occupying army didn't solve the problem with logistics and support. And secondly, it faced fierce resistance by Ukrainian army forces. In addition, the weather has a great influence, spring off road. Russia He's not doing that well, so what Russian's opinion on war? Because as you know, even two, three months ago, about 85% of Russian population highly supported Putin's strategy in war against Ukraine. So now, most Russians are not up to war, and perhaps with the pathos of the celebration, they want to regain their patriotic fervor raise it again, but I think the mood is a little different than it was in the beginning of the invasion. The war is clearly dragging on and there is no success. Even the Belarusian president Lukashenko showed his unhappiness with this long war, which now is ending and most likely is not going to end soon. This is the problem for Putin. His rally wanted to win his personal victory before May 9th, but he didn't succeed because everything goes not as he's planned and Ukraine continues to destroy all Putin's plans. When Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov was asked about May 9th, the other day he acknowledged that they were not victorious until that day and confirmed that the special military operation would continue, but without specific dates. The Russians are already afraid to name specific dates because no plans are being implemented, so they are now much, much more cautious about hostilities. They are not forcing the offensive because they are afraid of defeat again. For example, they almost no longer use the term denazification. Even Russian sources write about this. In addition, and this is also significant, they began to promote nuclear war, intimidate the West and Ukraine with the possibility of using nuclear weapons. Still, later it became clear that this frigions the Russian themselves, so now they are moving away from this topic. No one is able to say exactly how long the fighting may last, because Putin is obsessed with war. He wants to win. He needs at least some victories, and therefore the Russians will try to occupy new territories, both 
in the east and in the south of Ukraine. However, the Ukraine doesn't allow this to happen, and I think personally that the strength of Ukrainian resistance, that the destruction of Putin's plans will eventually, sooner or later, force not only Putin, but the Russian leadership as a whole to end this war. How long it will take depends on how quickly new modern weapons arrive and how exhausted Russia will be with this war. Most of the Russian elite understands there would be consequences, hard consequences, that will affect the Russian economy for probably decades. First, Russia will remain a world exile as long as it is led by Putin and or as long as the Russian troops are in Ukraine. Sanctions will not be lifted. Europe will indeed impose a ban on the purchase of Russian oil and gas sooner or later. Western companies will continue to leave Russia for good. The country will lose access to key technologies and some major imports. Russia will no, will no longer be allowed to participate in international forums. Its military and civilian, civil, civilian leaders will appear before international tribunal on charges of war crimes. Russia lies in the brutality with which it is waging this unprovoked war have undermined the credibility, credibility of de democracies and deprive them of any desire to deal with Russia. Its economy will most likely fall at least 10% this year and maybe even bigger next year when oil and gas revenues fall. Russia will become a weakened and isolated authoritarian state with limited capabilities. Secondly, Ukraine will finally be perceived as a legitimate and worthy member of the European community. Her aspirations will no longer be stopped because she is post-Soviet or suffers from pervasive corruption or because of lack of reforms. The resilience and determination of the people of Ukraine, the victory of its soldiers, the ingenuity of its leaders and the way it firmly identifies itself as a European democracy will lead to a radical change in its perception in Europe and America. Now everyone understands that Ukraine is one of us. Thirdly, as a result of the above, the European Union, the United States and other countries will launch a large-scale program of post-war reconstruction of Ukraine. These funds will give an opportunity not just to res restore what it was, but to build a better Ukraine with better and closer to the Western standards, more dig di digitalized, digitalized and more integrated with the West in energy, agriculture, and logistics. Also, during the reconstruction, changes will be made to legislative and regulatory documents to bring Ukraine's economy in line with U uh, European standards. It will certainly take years, but less than 30 years than have passed since Ukraine regained its independence. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to Ukrainian defenders for protecting our land. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed my podcast. Dear listeners, UBN is a team of 12 people, and despite the Russian invasion, we're still in Ukraine and continue delivering the news to the world. The UBN team would like kindly and humbly ask you to donate to our operation in order to allow us to continue our existence and deliver the news. You can go to our website, www.ubn.news, and click Support UBN Team. Thank you.